Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, let me show you me. There's me. See? And uh, I'm wearing t I'm wearing a T-shirt with a lot of writing on it. And, and in a way, well, let me show you what it says. We are Penn State. Oh, be proud of it. Be loud and be proud. And I got this girlfriend got this for me. I'm wearing it because I like to wear a T-shirt from Rape University. So you know. Uh, <laughs> Oh, hell. What the fuck? How are you? Uh, how are you doing this evening? A little bit later, we're, we'll be talking to the uh, <clears throat> the citizens panel. Uh, I'm a little choked up tonight because the weather outside is spiteful. It's getting really wet and stormy, and we're supposed to get a nor'easter in here. And when that happens, I get all clogged up, and my sinuses start acting up because when I was a little kid, I had sinus problems. And my parents did everything they could to take care of my sinus problems. I think I, I think I even had my adenoids radiated or something. I can't remember, but I had a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, it, it just turned out I had sin a sinus problem, and uh, I've had it all my life. You know, I, I don't get sinusitis a lot, but I get just get you know drippy whenever the weather changes. And as you get older, might I add, uh, yeah, because I see I'm old, I'm an old fart, uh, uh, everything starts to ache. Uh, teeth start to ache, uh, elbows start to ache, legs start to ache, uh, the feet start to ache, oh, everything starts aching. So this is all what the, you have this to look forward to as you get older. Well, you know, I thought, I thought it'd be better than this. I really did. I'll tell you where it really got lousy. Um, I'm very depressed today, and I'll tell you why. Now, let me, let me tell you the good news, okay? So, uh, as of March 1st, we are now no longer with Oxford as our insurer. We are with SAG-AFTRA, and we have as our, uh, as our um, uh, medical insurance, I think we have Blue Cross Anthem, and then we have Delta Dental, but then for our um, uh, pharmaceuticals, for our drug program, they gave us a thing called uh, Express, what is it? Exp something, Express something. Anyway, uh, so, uh, so, I, so we have that, and it, it, what you have to do, it's very strange. You have to buy only from either them by mail order, okay, which you have to fill out all kinds of stuff and all kinds of shit like that, or... You can go to a Walgreens, and Walgreens does the job for this. Express Grips, that's the name of the company. And what happens is you have to buy 90 days at a time. So your, your uh, uh, doctor will make out a prescription for 90 days or 180 days. or you know, In other words, um, in multiples of three months. So they can fill out three months of prescription. And... Uh, they said that's so that they can give you the best possible deal and so on and so forth. And I figured that's, that's cool. So we had our doctor call in the prescriptions to this Walgreens down the street. It's called Community by Walgreens. I don't know if you've ever seen these, but it's not, um, it's not like a normal Walgreens where you go in and the, the birthday cards are over here and the candy bars are over here and whatever. It's, n it's just a pharmacy. That's all it is. And you go in there and you get your drugs. And these people were very nice, helped us through it. They were just, I, I couldn't have dealt with a nicer group of people at a pharmacy ever. And there are only like two of them working there. And they've got all the drugs there and people just walk in and get their stuff. There's no big line in there. And it's really, it's really quite terrific. That's the good news. The even better news was I pay every month with... Uh, uh, with uh, 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 
Cialis, which I'll talk about later, which is usually about 75 bucks a month, I pay about $196 a month for drugs, okay? So today I go in to get it, and minus the Cialis, okay, for three months, and I'll tell you why in a second, um, our drugs, my drugs came to, for three months, for a three-month supply of all my drugs, okay, which normally minus the 75 each month would run me about $125, let's say. The three months was 108 bucks for three months. So each month, 102, excuse me, 102. So it comes to about $34, $34 a month. <laughs> what? Rovastatin or you know, the statin that I take normally ran me uh, $35 a month, and now it runs me $28 for the three months? I couldn't believe it. I mean, I thought what was going to happen with this is we'd have to pay for three months' worth of drugs. So if I was paying like $200 a month for drugs, it, then I'd have to pay them 600 But, you know, that's for three months. No, no. So that's the good news. That's, that's the really terrific news. Uh, all the money I'm going to save over the next year on drugs because I'm getting them at a third of the cost that they normally cost me. Okay, that's the good news. Now, I take Cialis. Now, you're saying, okay, so Alex, you're having a little trouble in your old age getting it up. Well, that's not really the reason I'm taking Cialis, although I've got to say that if you, as you get older, it's a little harder to, to get it up, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I could still get it up, but this stuff, it, it, you know, gives you a pretty good instant boner the minute you tr touch it. So anyway, but forget that. I don't take it for that. I never had that problem. The problem I did have, though, was an enlarged prostate. So I took a thing called finasteride, which is really, it, it, what it does is it, sh it, it shrinks the prostate over a period of time, and I've been taking it so long now, I imagine my doctor said my prostate's a little large. So apparently it's done what it had to do, because before it was blocking off the stream, right? Uh, and then my, my doctor gave me at that time a thing called Flomax. Now what that does is soften the prostate so that the urine can flow through, and, and it kind of relaxes the prostate, all right? But I didn't take to it too well. It made me lightheaded. It made me a little tired, uh, you know. And so I stopped using it. So I just lived on the on the uh, finasteride alone, which you know I still I didn't still was able to not have to pee every five minutes like in the old days. But anyway, I took this pill, and 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 I suddenly I said I saw this ad on TV one day and they said Cialis five milligrams daily Cialis uh, now also for BPH which is benign prostate hyperplasia which is exactly what I had so I asked my doctor could we try that and he said sure so I got a prescription for it but the problem was that uh, Oxford didn't cover it unless you asked for, I forget what it's called, uh, a previ previous uh, uh, exception or something like that. I, f I forget. The, I, keep, I, I keep saying the word all the time, the expression all the time, and then I can never remember it, okay? But uh, what it does is it simply you're, you're saying to the, you have, you're having your doctor say to the, uh, the medicine people, hey, he needs this. Uh, and here's the reason why he needs it, and I want an exception, okay? And they, and they gave me one, and for the last couple of years, I've been getting my Cialis without any, without any trouble, without any pause. So today, I go in there to get my Cialis as well, and they say, well, we, got to call, we were going to call you about this. The Cialis is going to cost you $1,100 for the three months. I went, What? You know, I said it was only costing me seventy-five in a copay before when I had Oxford, and they said, "Well, they say they don't cover it, but that you can." Uh, and I said, "Well, what can I do about this?" And they said, "Well, you can go to your union, who is the vehicle through which you're getting your medical plan, and ask them to file for an exception." Uh, and uh, so I called my union, 
and and they, they were she was told over the phone that you know I could go to my union and then they could make, they could protest it or whatever it's called, and um, so the, my union said yeah uh, have your doctor here's the fax send us the request and say why you need it and so on and so forth. So I phoned it into my doctor and my doctor's person got back to me and said he isn't in till Monday. So Monday I will know whether or whether I'm going to get this drug or not. But let me tell you, I mean, I could, I could, I suppose if I had to, I could, I could use another drug. But this drug makes me feel, it, I feel very comfortable with it. I don't have any side effects or anything else. But now I'm practically having to beg and plead so I don't have to feel discomfort. And yet these people don't, they don't want to go with the boner drug. Now, I checked to see, like, if, if I had Medicare Part D, which I guess I could tack on to my medical at this point if I wanted to, uh, how much, would, that, how much would, it, would they cover it? And here's a nice, interesting fact that you will enjoy, I think, no end, okay? Um, you can get, they will not prescribe, they will not give you a prescription for um, for um, uh, Cialis, okay? You have to fight and beg and plead the government to give you a, a prescription for Cialis. Somehow, because the fact that it gives people boners bothers them. The fact that it, it helps with BPH seems to be a, a lesser um, um, thing. They will not pay for, now let's say, with it, let's say you have a boner problem. They will not pay for Cialis if you have a boner problem. Okay, but they will pay for you if you need a penis pump. Yes, Medicare will take care of a penis pump, but it won't take care of the drug that might be the alternative to a penis pump. So there you go. But part of the problem is the drug becomes a prohibitively expensive drug. Uh, it right now I looked it up. It's uh, something like. Three hundred and twenty-five dollars, um, three hundred and twenty-five dollars uh, for a month supply. That's that's thirty pills. Um, you can get the other stuff. You can get the stuff that you take only when you need it. But that's not what I have to have. I have to have something that's a, a, a prophylactic, as it were. That it, it, it's in me every day. Okay, and so I take the five milligram and. Um, and, and that's just constant, okay? So here's what the problem is. My doctor thinks I need this drug. This drug makes me feel comfortable. It solves a myriad of problems, okay, is, is, what, they, is what they believe and think, and he's right in his assumption. Why shouldn't he have the right to say, hey, he should have this drug. Why does he need to write a second letter? Because he wouldn't be prescribing it for me if he didn't think I needed it, right? But no, we've got to go through all these bells and whistles to try and get it done. And it might be in the end I, I'm going to have to like settle for something like Flomax, which really I didn't tolerate that well. So I don't know. You know, Maybe I'm worrying ahead of time and I shouldn't even think about it because... Uh, uh, in you know, uh, uh, as things go, uh, uh, it'll probably, hopefully, it'll work itself out. But I've been depressed all day about this. Not that I don't get depressed about all kinds of things. Gee, I notice when I turn on my my screen, uh, turn on my Skype, uh, my my screen gets wider, uh, and then I get brighter, and so on. But uh, you know, this bothers me that that. Uh, uh, we have we have to even question the problem with drugs in this country and, and with things that make people comfortable. You know, this is a drug that makes me feel comfortable. I don't feel like I have to go to the bathroom every five minutes. Uh, it uh, it uh, unloads my bladder all the time, and I don't have any real problems with it. I had a little problem with the Flomax, but the Cialis, no. And, and I was so happy when it came along because I saw an alternative to the Flomax, which I stopped taking and suffered a little bit because I didn't really didn't want to use it anymore. It was not making me feel very good, okay? So, 
Anyway, so I, I've been depressed about that all day, okay? Uh, and then I get, and, and, and you, do you want to hear my depression? Do you really want to hear my, 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 my big depressions? Uh, uh, I, we have a company here that does my, that I do my website through. Uh, and that I also put uh, uh, all my sh our shows on so we can then put them on Roku and things like that. It's my ISP. It's my, oh no, it's not my ISP. It's my, my, it's what we call the server, basically. And to get my stuff onto it, I usually just go to GoDaddy and then I sign myself on and then I go through a whole process and I get to the point where I can sign on to all these various doohickeys. Well, Starting last week, it wouldn't come up. It would like freeze or it would say error or blah, blah, blah. So then I would have to call them. Now, uh, I don't know if any, most of you don't have any need for GoDaddy because you don't have a website, okay? But this is what serves my website and a few other things. So um, I, uh, 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 I, 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 you know, uh, went to them one night to post all the shows, and it's not signing in, okay? It had been signing in two hours earlier, but not not then. So um, I, uh, I wait, they say, well, uh, yeah, okay, that's your problem. Let's turn you over to hosting. So then they have this music, I, and if you've ever had GoDaddy, it is just, it's two torturous songs repeatedly played. So much so that they say, if you want to just stay online without music, uh, 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 just push uh, uh, pound. It, it, it's just terrible. Uh, in fact, I went online to, to um, uh, what do you call it, to, uh, on YouTube, to see if anybody had put online the GoDaddy Hold music. And there is, if you go to YouTube and, and you put in GoDaddy Hold, you know, Hold music, there's somebody who recorded it and plays it. And it's just over and over and over again. And this first night, I think I was on the phone because then I got to the hosting person and they said, well, we have to go to the other people and then this thing, wait and wait online. And, and then I said, well, look, can you just fix it? I'll get offline. You guys just fix it. And they go, well, if you get offline, we're going to stop fixing it. Huh? You mean if I get offline, if somehow I disconnect, all of a sudden... All this waiting will have been for naught. And they said, that's right, because I have to hold you on. So they, and if they see that you're no longer online, they, they stop working on it. I'm going, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. So I'm on with them for an hour and a half. And finally, they get the thing fixed. The next night, I sign on the same problems back again. In a week and a half, five times, this has happened. Okay, right now it's working. I don't know if it's going to be working at midnight. I have a workaround. I, I'm using now an FTP program, and I just go directly to the files and fuck their interface and their, their whole thing, you know. But, I mean, that drove me crazy. And the problem was is that it, the problem was always happening at, like, midnight my time. And if I'm there and I start maybe doing this at 1230, before you know it, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and maybe I'd like to go to sleep, but no, I'm listening to this fucking GoDaddy music. So anyway, it's working now, but it doesn't matter. I can still post the shows, and everything's fine, which is the other problem. I am going crazy, okay? Literally nuts. I hate to complain like this. I shouldn't take the half hour to complain. I should take the half hour to complain about other things that are worth complaining about. But... Um, uh, I, I just, you know, I just, I just am amazed at how, how badly some companies are run. And I, I, I've always loved GoDaddy because I always felt they did a good job of, of hosting my, my website. Uh, and, um, I've never had problems with them. And just recently, there's just all these problems with wait on the line so we can tell if, you know. What have you? So you know that that's one of the, that's one of the things driving. Oh, the other thing is driving me crazy. Okay, and I got to take this up with everybody that has a show here. Every show that goes on the air here, I have to create 
a uh, what's called a XML file. An XML file is a file that has uh, all the information about the shows and all the information that, like when you go to go, GabNet on Demand on GabNet.net, you go to GabNet uh, on Demand, all those things there are there because I have filled out a form, all right? And it's the same form every night except for changing one thing, the date, okay? And so every night I sit here before the show and I have four shows I do it for and I have to fill out each one. It's not like I can say, uh, repeat the last one and then I just change a few things and that's it. No, I've got to, I cut and paste the day before into the new day. It's just, it's, anyway, if you think about it, I do four of these a night. I used to do, I think, five a night, but now I do four. I do one for Damien, I do one for the intersection, I do one for this show, and I do one for the video, okay? Uh, and then on uh, Wednesdays, I also do the arena. Now, if you figure that on the average, over the last four years, for four nights a week, I've had to fill out one of these things for four, uh, four sh uh, f those things for four shows. Four times, uh, tw uh, t times four is 16, okay? So I do it 16 times a week. Now, you add that to how many years I've been doing this, and by the time you're through, we're coming into a couple of thousand, okay, of these things, these, these things I have to post. And it's getting to the point where, I don't know if it's that I'm getting old or I am just getting so goofy at doing this that I'm starting to make mistakes. I never made mistakes before, now I make mistakes. And mistakes. Hold on a second. This is my sinuses acting up. Uh, and so uh, uh, I have to do these things, you know, oh, I, I, I want you to appreciate what I do here, okay? So anyway, uh, uh, but, but hold on a second. I have to blow my nose and I'm gonna, I don't want to do it on the air, so let me just turn the, uh, the sound off a second. Boy, uh, okay. Uh, uh. I'd say the problem with having a mustache is that the snot gets in the mustache. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yeah. So I have to do these things, and and it uh, you know it, it it's starting to drive me crazy. And I've I've always tried to figure out is there a way that I can do this that will not be as impactive on my life, you know? And there isn't. And uh, I think Amy, when she was staying here one night when she was in New York, said, "Oh well, I can figure out a program that will do that." Well, I've yet to see it, Amy. So you know. I, I, I'm, it, that's driving me nuts. And, and, and there's no way, I, now you say, well, why don't you just have each of the people that do their own shows post their shows? Because they also goes, also goes to YouTube, you know, so they're on YouTube. And I could have them do it, but it's not that easy. You know, it's, it, I keep looking for programs that are cheap and easy for them to use to be able to fill it out, and we could figure out a way for them to do it so that it's taken care of. But I wish I didn't have to do that part of the job. That part is starting to get to me. Uh, and if I stop it, then there'll be no on-demand and there'll be no new stuff on um, Roku and there'll be no stuff going up on YouTube. So I'm stuck doing it, you know. And I've been doing it for f over four, well, yeah, over four years. So, you know, I wish I, wish I had an answer to that. Anyway, more, more coffee will do it. When I get, but so what I do is I post a show. If you ever notice, the shows are posted early, like about six o'clock my time, seven o'clock my time. When I get a few minutes, and they're they're not, they don't have the file of the uh, video, okay, or the audio rather. Uh, that I do after the show, and then all of a sudden, all I have to do is upload them onto the site. That of course doesn't work, right? So I have to FTP them now using something else. So anyway, that's that's the way it goes. I am I complaining? You know, I, I mean, I wish I were getting paid for this. Then I would have no reason to complain, but I'm not, and I haven't made money on it, and I haven't made a I haven't made a dollar in. Uh, well, I do get you know, social security, and I do have a pension at after that's not huge. Uh, uh, but uh, so so I do get several thousand dollars a month, but I really haven't had a paying job, 
and I would love to have a paying job. I think I'm damn good. I could go on the air and not have to complain because I just get on the air and complain about the world around us, which is really what is my specialty. Uh. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking Big Bang coffee again. I love Big Bang. It's my favorite coffee. It's made by Pete's. And it just has a really nice, easy taste. Well, I'll show you one more thing I got. This, this was the worst bot thing I bought, okay? Look at that. See that thing? See what that is? See? You plug that, right, into like the earphone jack, and then uh, you turn it on, and then I've got some Bluetooth earphones here, and ideally it should play the audio through the Bluetooth earphones, and it does. It works, but there's a delay. <laughs> I'm just, it's just a minus, a little minor delay of about a second or so, or a fraction of a second, but enough that while doing the show, it would drive me batty. So anybody want this? It's a waste of my money. Anyway, uh, and I, oh, I got these, these, by the way, are the best. See, I mean, the reason I wanted to do this, I use these Etymotics, but I found these earphones, right? These wire, wire, Bluetooth earphones. And I got to tell you, they are superb. Uh, the sound is, I think, better than the Etymotics. And the, it only costs like 29 bucks. I got girlfriend a pair, too. And what I love is when you're not using it, you can put it around your neck and see the magnet? See what it does? See, see the magnet there? Yeah. You can just put it around your neck like this, and then you do the magnet. And there you go. So you don't lose your earphones. Isn't that terrific? Unlike those fucking hash pipes that uh, that Apple is selling. Oops. Now i got to get out of all of this. Oh, now I'm tangled up. Hold on. Let me get untangled. Uh, uh, unlike uh, uh, those, those uh, things that uh, Apple's trying to sell, those hash pipes, which I found one on the, on the sidewalk the other day. The guy paid probably 150 bucks for them. So that's what that was all about. Anyway, look, it's uh, time. It's time for us to go to, uh, uh, yeah, let me see here. It's time for us to, I turned on, uh, I want to get rid of that. And I want to get rid of uh, that. Okay. And then uh, we will uh, turn on the audio here and the, Gabnet is on. Our Gabnet line is on uh, so that people can call us and talk to us uh, and t gripe about, uh, about uh, anything they want to. Or you don't have to gripe. You can just uh, talk to us. Uh, if you don't know how to give us a call, you go over to Gabnet.net. Over on the left-hand side of the page, right-hand side of the page, is a, uh, is a, is a thing uh, for uh, uh, a thing for uh, uh, telling you how to do it and everything. I get confused when somebody calls and I've got to then go to them. Uh, who, uh, I forget your full name again. It says John is what you're, you're listed as live. John Perulis. John, John Perulis. There we go. Hello, John. How are you? You know, I listened to the first part of your show, and I totally get it. Uh, it's all these goddamn little tiny things in life that yes. add up, yes. that just nag at you, that get you down. That I mean, we all go through this, you know. I, I mean, famously, uh, what's his name, the Sherlock Holmes? God, I'm blanking on his name now. Famous actor. Uh, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, he, he played Sherlock Holmes. Wait, which one, yeah. though? There, uh, hundreds of people have played Sherlock Holmes over the years. You're talking about Cum ben guy? Benedict Cumberpatch? No, not Cumberpatch. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 he, he was Iron Man. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, um, we're both having a senior moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, Downey. Uh, when he had his problems with cocaine, yeah. he said that one of the things that just uh, was frustrating for him was all these little things. Yeah. That you, every day there was a, a, a mountain of little stupid no, things. No, but when you're that, on coke, that makes sense because, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, having been on coke myself, yes, every little thing irritates you. But uh, I think my problem is not cocaine. My problem is called age. 
and well, and that I just don't have correct. time for this shit anymore. Quit trying to take the it made my life easier. Don't make it more difficult. You know. Yeah, I know. Well, hey, I had a difficult time getting on here. I, I all of a sudden I got a message from Skype saying you've been banned because someone hacked your account and was sending spam on it. And I really? said what? So I had to go to my Microsoft account yeah. and get a text code to uh, get back into Skype. And I thought, what the hell? You know, what is this weird? I mean, how could somebody hack my Microsoft account and start sending spam off of it? You know, I mean, I don't do that. I, yours is the only show that I even use Skype for. No, I mean, please. I don't I'm, use it for anything well, else. I'm kind of feeling uh, uh, like me calling me. I got infected now. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and it will cost a lot for the drug. That, we were just talking about that. You know, his <laughs> they wanted to charge him like eleven grand. I know. Well, I, well, I, I was less. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred dollars for three months. Where? Oh, it, it, where? If you know, it, imagine it, what it's going to cost you to get rid of infected uh, 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 Skype. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, no. No, he's talking about his his uh, his process. The Cialis, I know. Cialis, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it, you know, I had the same thing with the finasteride that you were talking about. What? What was? Uh, I, uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable with the finasteride. Well, the there was finaster some sort of yeah. side effects. I don't remember exactly. Finasteride what they were. has side effects, but I've lived with it for so long; it doesn't bother me now. But uh, you know, I I, ju well. I just think that if your doctor thinks you need a drug. Then the prescription company, because you are paying the money, should okay the prescription. Well, the uh, Cialis five milligrams worked as well, if not better, than the Flomax, and so I, I didn't like the Flomax either. Yeah, uh, and uh, and there's no side effects uh, with the Cialis. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, and they they should know that. But what they the difference is the difference between Flomax. And Cialis is, Cialis costs $325 a month if you want to buy it without prescription, you know, without having insurance. Uh, and I think finasteride costs about 10 cents. I mean, not yeah. Flomax costs about 10 cents, you know. Yeah. What, what does it cost in Tijuana? Well... You know, I mean, I wish, <laughs> you know, I, I, I wish we could go to Canada and buy our drugs, you know. If it, huh? You can. No, you can't. Uh, yeah, you can do a mail order. Yeah, but, you know, it's not that cheap. It's no? not that cheap. Uh, you know, I, I remember this one drug. I keep mentioning this drug, and it's called, um, uh, what was it called now? Uh, but it was for IBS. Uh, uh, yeah. No, well, no, it was it was start. Oh God, why can't I remember it? See, I'm I'm gone. I'm through. My life is over. Uh, I, you can't, you know. But anyway, I took this drug and it was it, it was great. My doctor made out like a couple of pres you know about a year's worth of prescriptions on it. And I had like five bottles of it here, and I wasn't even using it that much. Then all of a sudden, I went in to get it one day, and they said, oh, no, this is, uh, you have to get, what, what's it called? A pre-authorization. That's the prior authorization. And uh, I went, well, how much is it going to cost me if I, uh, it, first, when I first bought it, and I didn't get a, a prior authorization, I didn't get it uh, uh, that taken care of. It was like $300. So this is a few years later, right? And so I say to the person, well, how much is it going to cost me? I'm figuring they're going to say 300 Maybe now it's 350 mm -hmm. They said $2,100 for a month's supply. Mm -hmm. And I went, what? How did it go from 300 to $2,100? And I'm figuring, is this the same guy that owned that company that made the AIDS medicine? You know, because they went after him because it went up like 500 percent. But I figure by my reckoning, this thing went almost up about the same amount. Yeah. And then yeah. we tried to get prior authorization and it was hell. I mean, we couldn't get it. We just couldn't get prior authorization. And my gastroenterologist was saying he needs it. He's got IBS. He's he's and really it was at that time the only thing that made me feel comfortable. And and so I felt uncomfortable because the uh, me medical companies wouldn't pay for my my drug. Now here's the thing: I I cured my IBS or not cured it, but I took something just as good, probiotics. 
clean the thing out completely. I mean, not mm-hmm. completely. Every now and then I get a little little flow back because I, I, I forget to take the probiotics. But you, you didn't want to listen to me about probiotics when I told you, and you didn't want to listen to me about the chiropractor. So, you know. Well, I'm, I still I'm, haven't done the chiropractor yet. I haven't done the chiropractor yet. Yeah. Hey, I, hey I, we're I, all going to join the NRA after listening to you the other day. Oh, well, thank you. Hey, John, by the way, <laughs> uh, senior physician. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> yeah, the day we see John Perulis joining the NRA is the day hell freeze is over. Well, uh, he'll get, he'll I, get I joined the NRA actually. I, I did. Why? In, in two, I joined. I did, in fact, join the NRA in two thousand and seven. I don't belong anymore. But why did you join? It would, he Texas, wanted to bag. Te- Texas did it for me. Uh, yeah, I bought a shotgun yeah. in Marin because I got a job for four months in Texas near the border. And I thought, that's a dangerous place. You know, so I thought, ah, you know, this way I I have some protection, you know. So uh, I go to the gun shop there in Marfa, Texas, or Alpine. Yeah. And they won't won't even sell it ammo to me and said, hey, you got to join the NRA. (laughs) And I said, oh, Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Well, how much is it? You know, 20 bucks, uh, you know, for. Wait a minute. You uh, had to join the NRA in order to buy a gun? It was in 1910. No, not a gun. Ammo. <laughs> Ammo. I, no. I, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I go to the uh, uh, the gun shop, uh, which is run by a, a, a retired border patrol cop. Yeah. And uh, I wanted a, a oh a ghost sight and a and a heat ref, uh, exchanger put on the barrel, you know, because it looks sexy and you could sight it better and. Uh, I had my locks in the trigger, you know, and all these security things. And he wait, said, wait, you took, you took, you took smoked salmon and, and I, wait a minute, wait, you took smoked salmon and put it in the trigger? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. It's, oh. uh, it's a trigger guard. Oh, because to, to a Jew, the word locks, and there are three Jews here. <laughs> now, the word locks oh, yeah, suddenly, like makes locks. Us, yeah. suddenly makes us drool. Uh, oh, okay. So, he put so the guy. fish, but he ate it. <laughs> so, so the guy looks at me. And he says, oh, he says, where are you from? And I said, California. And he says, here, we don't use those things. He said, if someone's going to go break down your house and go in there, that damn trigger lock is not going to help you at all. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, I had my little foray. It was kind of interesting um, be, belonging to the NRA uh, for that period of time because yeah. I, I, I kind of wanted to find out about the organization from the inside yeah. and see if there are actually people within it that have divergent opinions. And in fact, there was, it was a, in Alpine, there's a very famous Texas Ranger, you know, Joaquin Jackson, yeah. who, who was uh, uh, on the board of directors for the NRA. And he caught a tremendous amount of grief because he had the, the, courage to stand up and say that he didn't like hunters using uh, AK-47s or AR-15s to hunt. He said it's not a hunting rifle. And they got down on him. They almost kicked him off the NRA because he took that position. And, uh, you know, this guy, you could read his books, fantastic books, Uh, One Ranger. You know, he's got uh, 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 book one and uh, book two and... uh, yeah, he was in a film with, uh, oh, uh, 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 Tommy Lee Jones, who also comes from there. Uh, you know, and, uh, Laredo. That was the name of the film, and you know, great people. And uh, you know, I got to be real friendly with them. And then I made another mistake. Oh, wait a minute! Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Now, it, it, we, if I remember you correctly, didn't you yeah. say you were with Greenpeace at one time? Yeah, sure. A- and you almost got arrested by Phil. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it have been six degrees of. Uh, so, how does one go from a, shall we say, <laughs> a, a, a green peace orientation, which is green yeah. and peace? What two great words can <laughs> you know? What two Save better words? The whales. Saving uh, well, the whales. I, I don't and all of a sudden, the guy here, wants to I, save the whales has a shotgun. Yeah, I had to. I had to do something interesting it, with the shotgun when I was living in Marfa. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to Amazon and I started buying conservative books, 
you know, I bought uh, uh, Michael Savage books. I bought <laughs> Ann Coulter oh, books. God. I bought Bill O'Reilly books. What were you, were you trying and to commit mental suicide? Is that what you were trying to do? It was, was in the oh, war. I, I, I put them up on the target range in Texas, and I shot them uh, with my shotgun. <laughs> And I filmed them, and they're online. I mean, I've, I could post them, you know, and send it to you. That they're, they're real great. Uh, so, so, uh, single shot, solid shot, does an amazing thing to a book. Yeah, you know, it just turns it into confetti. Now you didn't you read know. them beforehand; you just used them for target practice. Yeah, it, you know, it's funny. Uh, uh, it costs more for the shipping from Amazon than the book. Like Bill O'Reilly's books, you could get them on Amazon for one penny. And the same with Savage. All his books are like two cents, three cents, and Ann Coulter's books were like five cents. Now, did you turn it around <laughs> so the dust cover was to you so you could shoot them in the face? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I got to do my liberal thing with a shotgun. Yeah. yeah. Targets are cheaper. What? Yeah. Targets are cheaper. Targets are cheaper? Yeah. yeah probably. Is that going to be the name of your new book? No, <laughs> targets are, targets cheaper. are cheaper. By the way, folks, uh, we could use some more callers here. I see Renee's out there. She's on our. Uh, uh, she's doing some uh, chatting here with people. Uh, who else is there? Uh, Charlene is there. She's. Uh, you're not calling Charlene. You're just chatting. So for all you people, I who don't. Uh, just like Nixon, I'm not a crook. I don't belong to the NRA anymore. I suspended um, my. By the way, I Shut found out. By the way, I found out something about our chat room here on uh, on on uh, uh, Skype, YouTube, on YouTube. Uh, that if you watch the show later, you can watch it with the chatting. In other words, the, the, oh, yeah. the, there's a, the, right. they, it records yeah. the it's chat cool. and then it plays it back as they did it during the show. So you can have just as much fun watching the rerun as you can watching it yeah, live. Yeah, thank God I'm not on Facebook. Uh, just that my NRA admission, I probably lose about 200 of my friends. So. Oh, oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, you had a reason. You wanted to buy bullets. And you couldn't buy bullets. That's right. Could, couldn't you have gone to another <laughs> store and bought bullets without the NRA? Uh, this is a very small Texas town. There's only one gun shop oh. in town. I was <laughs> watching a, 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 um, a series uh, that I think took place in Marfa, Texas. It was about a guy who was a, um, uh, a professor. And I think this other professor and his wife got transferred there. And then she had fantasies about... Uh, sleeping with this professor uh and the um i remember the name of the actor but he's well known uh who was the yeah. uh part of this thing it was only a one season uh it might have been amazon he, uh, were you familiar with it alex what uh, i love is it i love dick yeah that's it <laughs> yeah no that was the name of the show folks oh, right. i'm not Actually, kidding there was a show. i love yeah, dick that was yeah. in marfa uh, uh, supposedly in marfa texas yes i think so you're right phil yeah. i watched two episodes of that and i couldn't yeah it, just, it was tough it was tough it was it, uh, it, yeah. it, it, well, yeah. i'll check it out just to look at marfa but hey you know marfa's been in hollywood for a long time the uh, uh jimmy dean's last film giant was filmed in marfa texas oh, and really? then uh there will be blood and no country for all men all filmed in Marfa. You know in what fact, you what I you could say. Guy, you could say this guy who was killed by Anton Sigur in uh, No Country for Old Men. Uh, he's the bank president of the Marfa National Bank, Chip Love. Oh. You know, and he was the first guy that you know he put the. Yeah, but I mean, they, they, you know, they say um, uh, what was it? They, they said uh, <laughs> uh, um, um, that uh, um, now I forgot what I was going to say. See, uh, I'm, we I'm out of it tonight. I'm really out of it tonight. Anybody want to do the show instead of me? <laughs> um, yeah, let John do it. Huh? <laughs> let John do it. Yeah. He's having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'm having a good time. This is a great show. Alex, yes. I went by one of your spots today. Uh, what do you mean one of my spots? I don't spots? know if you remember. I think it was on K KITS. You used to take your show out on the road with Lori Thompson. Yeah. I'm sure you remember her. I used to have a big crush on her. Of course. Her. And she's still she's still really beautiful. Oh yeah. She's and uh, you're on Highway 101 in Mill Valley near Goodman's. Oh you yeah, well, we did. No, what we did. Lot we we did a live we, radio we, show we, from kept, there. We kept saying that we were we were doing Alex Bennett road shows. I said let's really do a side of the road show. So we actually. 
put a line right. in by the side of the road on Highway 101 in, uh, in uh, between Sausalito and Mill Valley. I think it was probably physically in Mill Valley. And yeah. uh, we, uh, we just did the whole show from the side of the road. And, yeah, it uh, was fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, was, it was it was great. I I drove by and I actually saw your setup there, but you know I was in traffic, so I couldn't do anything except drive by. That, but, that was not an easy yeah. show to do either, because to get a line put yeah. in there, because in those days you had you said put a line into the, the uh, ISDN uh, line. Yeah, well, not right? an ISDN yeah. line. Not, usually a no. phone line. Oh, a phone yeah. line. Wow. Yeah. 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 You remember Alex the time that we did uh, your show from your kitchen table in Sausalito. Well, that was uh, no that <laughs> was that was because the whole roadside had fallen over the highway going out of out of uh, Sausalito. And, and they forced me out of my place on the other side of Sausalito, so I stayed on your sofa and yeah. I was your only guest. And then in but the then morning I told the station I'll just put my phone here, and I'll start talking into my phone. I'll put it on the table, on the, on the dining room table. And so I sat there with it propped up on a book, I think, on the dining room table, and did my show from my uh, from my uh, from my, uh, in my then, dining so room. So you you two guys go back uh, quite yeah. a way. Uh, then we oh, took yeah. Unfortunately, we do, yeah. yes. <laughs> then we took a walk. We went to the 7-Eleven, yeah. and we called in from the pay phone there. And we said we were uh, looking for girls. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. Uh, Ray Renati has just joined hey. us again, ladies and gentlemen. What's up? He's he's Thanks. now he's now Thanks. pretty much considered a regular around these parts. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm regular around these parts. <laughs> oh, listen, I got to tell you, tonight I watched the last episode of a show I've been watching for the last oh, I don't know, the last five weeks. This is the sixth week. It only has six episodes. It's called Waco. Oh, and it's yeah. about it, it's the last Texas is again. It Texas. was the last episode. Uh, yeah. By the way, turn off your your sound uh, because I don't want to spoil the ending for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was, I think, all told spectacular because wow. one of the guys that that they use as source materials, the guy who plays the, uh, uh, the, uh, the guy who talks to the people in the building and is trying to talk them into coming out. And, you know, he, he's, uh, I don't know what they call the job. I forget it now. Negotiator. Negotiator. Exactly. And so the negotiator, you mean and then, uh, the other book that it was taken from was one of the guys who was in there who got out. Okay. So you have this wonderful screenplay, that looks at both perspectives and you get a whole different attitude about what was going on inside that house. You know, after it was all over, they tried to say, oh, oh, they, they poured gasoline all over the place and they set it on fire. It's not mm. true. It's not mm. true. It was, in fact, the incendiary qualities yeah, of, of, of tear gas. Yeah, they, uh, they, I think they used a, a flashbang which was supposed to disorient the people inside so that they could yeah. make an entry. Yeah. Well, the flashbang is an incendiary. Yeah. So they, they sent that in, and I think yeah. the walls or curtains or something the caught place on fire. Was, the place was like a tinderbox because they built it themselves. It was yeah. not built to real spec. Who just joined us on the phone, by the way? Uh, this, this is Mario. Oh, hi, Mario. You haven't called in a while. Hey, yeah. Let me put yeah, your, it's been a while. Let me it's put your name up here so busy. I can rename the, the thing so I know that it's Mario. Uh, otherwise, in my old age, I'll forget names. There we go. So now it says Mario. See, folks? Anyway, uh, I'll get back to you I in just a second, see Mario. number one. I, yeah? Really? Oh, well, yeah. I see Mario. Anyway, here, I, I, here, I can be number one. <laughs> here's the point I'm making. Uh, it is, it really, it, it, it you go through the ending is just grisly. I mean, how these people died inside there and they're being trapped in the basement and so on. And it's just grueling. But it is the fairest piece of television I've seen about this subject. And what a clusterfuck it turned out to be on the part of the government. There was mm -hmm. no reason for them to go in there. These people were fairly peaceful. These were peaceful people. These were, these were weirdos. Right. You know, weird little cult thing going on there. 
But that was that was the sum total of it. And and the negotiators fighting with the government, with the FBI. He's one of the FBI, but he's fighting with his bosses, saying, "Look, you know, these people are ready to come out. Just give them time. You don't have to do anything." Mario. Yeah, huh? Yes, Mario. Are we talking about Waco here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know what? I, I've been watching a special on Netflix about uh, what's it, Ted Kaczynski. The Unabomber. Unabomber. Oh, 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 oh I, uh, is, is it, <laughs> yeah. What about him? Yeah. It, it's like, well, it's about a seven, it's like a uh, seven, <laughs> maybe seven, um, what do you call it? <laughs> look, look, you, you can't see Ray Renati right now, but he look, he's trying to look like Ted Kaczynski, but he's looking more like <laughs> like death over my shoulder. <laughs> With a, <laughs> and, and, and John but, Perulis um, is wearing dark glasses. <laughs> God, I should. I don't have. Any <laughs> <an actor. laughs> but, but in, in that uh, in that series, I know that um, Jan, was it Janet Reno was in charge at that time. Yeah, both of those yeah. situations. Yeah, they portray and, um, they portray her in there. Yes, but it, it's it's a very good if anybody gets a chance to check it out. But you know, I, uh, they they kind of uh, read off his manifesto while watching it. And I hate to say it, but most of the stuff he was saying is, is true, you know, just about how you get enslaved oh. by technology. Oh, well, his manifesto. Well, more. you know, if, if it wasn't it was a typewriter, let they me, gave him away. Well, let me put it this way: if if he hadn't, uh, if he had just been, how's the, what am I trying to say here? If he had just been a little terse, more terse in his mm -hmm. writing. Delivery. Uh, uh, yeah, in, in his writing, I think that it pro he probably would have, a lot of people would have paid attention to that. But I started to try and read it when they published it in the New York Times. And I'm telling you, I fell asleep, <laughs> you know, because it was just so rambling. It was so all over the place. But yes, yeah, there were points right. he was making. There were points he was making that I had say, the guy knows what he's talking about. You know, Is that how you came up with the idea? Well, for the well I think they... What what what? Wait a minute. Phil was trying to say something. Mario, yes. Is, is Ted Kaczynski's uh, writings how you came up with the idea for the ramble? No. <laughs> was no. no. Well, I, I think they simpl they simplified it for but, the series, but this simply so, so exactly they, this simply gave validity to his feelings about technology. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He was he wasn't he a graduate student at Cal for a while. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was a pretty sharp guy, but then he, he became paranoid. I think. Well, I mean, I, th yeah, I, think, I think he they, knew a lot of stuff. Wait, uh, I uh, thought there was a Stanford graduate that hit his professor with a hammer. No, that's a different guy. That's that, a different. Not. Uh, yeah, that's Strelesky. the guy they let out of jail. That was Streleski. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, he was a Russian. Stravinsky, Stravinsky. You know, they're they're all <laughs> they all sound alike. <laughs> yeah, they let him out of jail after what, like seven years or fourteen years or something after he murdered his professor, I think. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Wow. Crazy man. Oh, Did he graduate? What? Uh, with honors, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My eye is and maximum cum laude. <clears throat> and I'm a new, new, new teacher sponsor. Yeah, my. <laughs> I used to have some stuff for my eye when it started itching, and I can't find it anywhere here. Huh. Talk to yourselves. I'm just going to go uh, get it. It's right outside the front door here. Hey, I got this yeah. thing. Uh, you know, it's like. Right. Little, 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, Phil, this is, Phil, this is Mario. Yeah, hey, hey, back Mario. here. All right, this Phil. Was, um, hey, the, the other night I, you mentioned. I found this stuff. I had to go when look it up. The, it was, uh, uh, in the uh, you hospital. Mentioned uh, it was oh, so okay. dry that my eyes started Are itching, you something fierce, you. Uh, and yeah. so they gave me this stuff to use, oh, oh. and it was so good. I bought I bought like a case of the goddamn stuff, and it's it's oh. for dry eye, but it's also if you have like an itchy eye, you can just take it and put a little bit of it there on your finger. And oh, just, uh, there we go. Mario was asking a question while you didn't have your plugs in. Oh, okay, oh, Ma Mario, what's your question? <laughs> I was asking Phil the other night. He had mentioned uh, I actually had to look it up. The Promise Program for the, yeah, uh, yeah. Now, now, what is it your understanding of the Promise Program does? Uh, my understanding was that the uh, schools uh, were given a grant to reduce crime, and if they so, one way that they were able to reduce it was not to report it. 
and to allow these uh, the school to handle it internally rather than uh, report it to the police. And uh, do you know why that is? Do you uh, know why that was? Yeah, they were looking for better statistics, and they uh, supposedly wanted to keep the kids out of the court system. Right, and because wanted, uh, a lot a lot of nights. A lot of nights I wish I could call. I mean, I listen every single day. But yeah. a lot of nights I wish I could call, but I go to bed kind of early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, where where but, are you? Yeah. What part of the country are you from? He's in Alabama. Uh, Indianapolis. Oh, oh Indiana. Indiana. You just yeah, Indiana. You just assume because of the dialect he was uh, from the south. Did he move? Did, uh, because he, <laughs> I think he used to be I'm black. I'm from the south. No. No, you always confuse. <laughs> you are, I don't know why you think I'm from Alabama. But, yeah, uh, but, but you're, you usually you do use Skype and you do you. I mean, you use your you uh, use uh, your camera and stuff right? because we've seen. Yeah, I've seen him before. Yeah, yeah. No, I never used it. I, no. I think it's well, a different. Maybe guy. it's a different oh. guy that's from Alabama. Well, you but, know, yeah, he's black. All, all these black <laughs> all these black people <laughs> seem alike like to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Guy with a name like Mario, I figured you had a game named after you. Mario, <laughs> yeah. Mario, not okay. Mario, Mario, Mario. Right. You know, he's a soprano. Any, but, anyway, anyway, let let Mario finish his thought. Thank you. So, so, so anyway, I, I like to call to to give a different perspective because you know, um, just to add some diversity to the panel, uh, because my yeah, understanding of, of what that, my understanding of what that is about, Phil. Uh, when I was in high school, um, which was in the 90s, um, a, lo a lot of times what happened is you'll get into a quarrel with a guy and you guys get in a fight or, or mm -hmm. something minor, and then the next thing you know, you have a record, you know, uh, a battery or something of that nature where some of the um, suburban schools, you know, um, things happen and, and it's just like, oh, I'll call your parents and, you know, have them talk to you and then, you know, uh, you'll be back in school and a day or two if you're even suspended at all. So a lot of the inner city students were catching um, full-blown uh, records behind, uh, you know, fights or, yeah. or just incidents that were happening at school. And uh, the only place I was able to really find a lot of information on it was Rush's, Rush Limbaugh's site. Well, yeah, the, so, uh, it was instituted by Eric Holder uh, in 2013. And uh, from what I understand... Uh, it was, uh, you know, they, they were making an effort to reduce crime, uh, or the, no, but, 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 see, the, the, but the thing is you have to learn to, uh, distinguish what's a, a propaganda from, from reality, you know, well, anything um, that you they, would read they, they from just, the right wing you think is propaganda. No, no, I, 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 I that's not true. You I'm see, just I telling you what I lived in, I think it's what I lived in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How old what I lived from life. Yeah, I'm 37. No, I think let me let me let me uh, interject here and say that what I think Phil was trying to say is this program existed and and where it was misused was that in order to be able to get uh, money, money from the government and so on, schools rather than report problems and incidences in the school tried to deal with them from within the school, so there was no record of them having happened. And I think that's what I, he's trying I don't to say. see. But I don't see anything wrong with, you know, if, if they're getting money for it, but people's lives are being saved instead of them. Well, no, no, I, I agree. I agree with the, I, I think we, we, would, we would all agree with the basic premise of the program. It's just that nobody mm -hmm. took into account the fact that some people would misuse it. That, I think, is what. Seven, Mario, 17 kids what? in Parkland, Florida are dead because uh, of. No, no not, not because necessarily okay, because of that. Hey, he, he had 30 contacts or 39 contacts with the police, and nobody did anything and, about it. Yeah, but that had nothing that, to that do with right. wasn't That program wasn't put in place for him. No, but you it was know? put in place for he, people he, like him. He, he no. Was going, he, no, he, was, he wasn't going to be reported regardless because he was white. That's oh, my point. Okay, so you're pulling the white card. Well, yeah, I think it's a good one. Yeah, I, know, I think no, it's a good he's one. got a point. That's absolutely true. Nah, you, all the kids down there are white. You know, if they were in Opelika, it'd be a different story, but they're in Parkland. Well, let, let me, okay, okay, well, let me tell you this. The, the only reason, oh, okay, I, I've been dealing with kids bringing guns to school since I was in high school. They yeah. never shot up the place, but I know plenty of guys who brought guns to school, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Now that, why? Yeah. They use, they, they use them because because a lot of times it went with their persona. Yeah, that's right. They never yeah. used them, but they would show them off. 
Yeah. You know, and then um, it went with their persona for one and for two. They used it for protection when they were getting off the bus at home in the neighborhood. Mm. Mm. Well, you know, it's, it's okay. bad then, people had to live okay. with it. Anyway, go ahead, Mario. Well, I mean, somebody has to live. Some, I mean, you know, it's America, you know, it's all, or any country, you know, someone is living like that. But here's my point. My point is now, just, that, I mean, just, this is something just, we've been dealing with for years because like, just like in Chicago right now with the murders, 340 plus murders every year, every time there's a murder, I have never once heard anyone talk about the type, oh, you know, this kid has lost his mom, you know, two months ago, three months ago, so on and so forth. There's no excuses. There's no, you know, there's there's nobody in there uh, looking to see that these guys might, some of them are maniacs or, you know, may have mental health issues that aren't being addressed, but they're just seen as, oh, they're thugs and they're, you know, you know, that's what you kind of expect let me when ask you go you, to Chicago. Let me ask the panel mm-hmm. something. Uh, have there been any black school shooters I don't think so. No. Not that I can think of. Huh. No, no, you're you're, you're no. right, Phil. You're really right. Well, that's not because they're armed, but you're right. So, <laughs> you know, but but, but, but here's the thing. Hmm. But the mental health issues, you know, are 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 plaguing Chicago and a lot of inner cities. But uh, nobody addresses them. I think them. there's a lot of crime in Chicago. Or make so, hold on, wait a minute. Or make excuses when things happen. You know, um, the first thing you hear when this happened, when the South Carolina church incident happened was a lot of pity about the upbringing of the child and um, what he faced. Yeah, it, it was a white shooter. Guy. Yeah. The, the thing about Chicago that you mentioned, you know, uh, Chicago has the most onerous gun laws uh, in, in the country, or almost the most onerous, and yet uh, they have the highest amount of uh, gun crime uh, in the nation. So... Uh, I and then you know people say well they're getting the guns from Indiana but these people aren't getting their guns legally they you know what, what difference does that well because uh, what you what people want to do with these AK47s and M, uh, M uh, and and uh, M uh, the um, AR15s uh, AR15 is say, mm-hmm. yeah AR15s is they want to say they want to stop people from buying them legally but the problem with gun crime is that it's the illegal uh, uh, getting of the guns that uh, in areas where they have these uh, laws. Uh, but there's one thing that all gun crimes have in common. Uh, somebody pulled the trigger. Guns? Yes. Ray, yeah, you're, you're the winner. Also, you're what the about winner. people? Bullets. Bullets. People. You see, you want to blame inanimate objects. <laughs> no, wait a minute, wait a minute. They are not inanimate Bullets. objects when they are being used. No, but they're based by a person. Bullet. And, you know, and, you know, and these kids, I again think that it's that they, you know, that they're, um, they're using a Band-Aid to fix a mental health no, problem. No, I, I think that uh, the president oh. is using a Band-Aid to try and solve this problem. Yeah. Hey, the president minute, is getting uh, a lot of flack okay, okay, from right, the Republicans right. Uh, right now because he's siding with the Democrats on the on the, on the the gun issues. Uh, 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 hold on, hold, Mario. Bill, you, you guys talked last night about Dick's Sporting Goods and Walmart and different places. Yeah, they did. You know, take they're being they're being proactive about that situation and donald trump said up there and he said that um you know essentially if he was there he would have been superman ran in with no (laughs) gun and and attempted to save lives but he has the ability to save lives right now because he is the president of the united states and he's doing nothing about it and he's doing nothing he's doing something he's doing he called that man a coward he's doing more what's what's he doing phil and he what's he doing phil Tell me what well, he's, he's done. Talk, he's talking about uh, what's, what's uh, the way, uh, what did you say? What was the word you just used? What? I think the talk. word you were saying was talk. talk. Well, that's the beginning. Yeah. Did no, you he see went, he went from talk? No, you know, no, no, Phil. He, he wanted he wants to put sh- he wants to put he wanted to put firearms first first. I mean he's changed his position since three days ago. He wanted to put firearms in the hands of teachers. I think of that's which a great idea. If, if my if my third period teacher when I was in eleventh grade had a gun, she could barely see me in the second row. I don't think your third period teacher that can't see is going to be one of the ones they're going to give the gun to. He, really? Oh well, then if she doesn't have the gun, then, but that's where the gunman of, what comes kind of in. Teacher, who, what kind of teacher could have double as an assassin? 
Yeah, you know, that's exactly. No, I, I, there's there's some movie that I uh, there's a a, 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 a movie a series uh, uh, with this teacher. Uh, that comes back. He's a uh, black ops guy, and uh, he comes back to help his friend who was. Oh, the one. By, uh, wh- what's that guy's name? Clint, the star in Clint Eastwood. No, it's not Clint Eastwood. Uh, but he he's like the uh, he's this teacher that comes back, and he's a he's a real tough uh, black ops uh, 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 combat guy, and he discovers a drug ring in the school and uh, takes all of these guys out. Uh, and there's but like. You, but you make my point. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Ren- <laughs> Renee makes the point that basically uh, you never hear of women shooting up schools. No, you know. Right. It's always a guy. It's always a white see, male. Mario, we'll only give the where Mario's the point is, 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 you know, got lost on me is when he started pulling the black card. No, I agree. Whoa! It, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, it, believe it or not, there are some black cards, and, and, they're, and they're worth pulling in an argument uh, well, because not. they're true. I don't think so. Uh, I, I think that well, that's because you know, you're very white, Phil. You're extremely you. white. I, I'm trying to give you a different perspective. If you want to talk directly to what I'm saying and and, and tell me, you know, and, and explain to me why why I'm seeing things wrong, I'm welcome. Well, you asked you know, me. My ears are uh, all over. You asked me, Mario, what I uh, what I said about the predator, uh, uh, the, not predator. Uh, now I forget the name of the act. Uh, what's it called again? A program, some uh, what yeah, the uh, promise, promise, program. promise, the mm-hmm. promise act. Uh, you know, and so I brought it up, uh, and uh, it's not being uh, it's not being exposed on the news in, in a lot of areas, but it is true. And uh, uh, and Eric Holder uh, created it. These schools took the okay. money, and because of it, they didn't report crimes that could have saved lives. I hate to read. Right, what, but, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I hate to read. It's nothing black or hold, white hold about on that. I hate to read something on the chat line here because the, Renee should be calling on this, but she isn't. It says mental health is a red herring. We can't fix the mental health thing because mental health is a health care problem, and the Republicans killed the ACA. You know, it has nothing to do with getting insurance. Oh, if you got, Phil, if you got Phil. mental health problems, what happened is they, they, uh, the uh, courts said that these people have civil rights and you can't uh, take them off the street if they don't want to be taken off the street, uh, you know, because they have civil rights. Uh, now, even though they, they took adjudicated uh, mental health people uh, in the 70s, uh, and closed down the hospitals, uh, and these people were deemed to be a danger to themselves and others, and they still put them on the street. That created the homeless problem that we have. You know, uh, there, there's a lot of things. Yeah, but there are a lot happen. of other things that caused the homeless problem as well. Yeah, like Ronald Reagan. Like Ronald this Reagan. Thing. Ronald Reagan, yeah, Ronald. The governor of California at the time, when he released. The uh, the the mental patients from Napa. It wasn't, and, they, they, it they wasn't followed, so much he followed it was, across the country. It wasn't yeah. so much he released them as no. as uh, he just refused to fund them any longer. And yeah, so they had to happen. Be. Is uh, he he said that private companies would now open institutions for these people, and they never did. Uh, that's what happened. You know, he yeah. he promised. The citizens of California that it never happened a change nationally and so he just released them the, the, he had he a did yeah. like at Agnew State Hospital in San Jose became a private institution but then it was only uh, occupied by people with mental health issues whose families could afford to pay for it mm-hmm. so, so then all the homeless people who had no families they couldn't go in there when, when Reagan and when Reagan was governor of California and that was to like 72 or 73. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay, Who was the president? Uh, see, uh, that was Nixon, right? What? No, that was, uh, was the president. Nixon, Reagan, yes. Governor Reagan. of California. Turn on uh, your camera. Turn on. Turn. Oh, there we go. Yes, Nixon. There she is. I shamed her into calling. <laughs> yeah, you did. You, so it, it was, but see, last night I was in my pajamas. That's why I didn't call in. <laughs> so tonight I'm at least dressed. Hey, look, it doesn't stop me. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I, I have on the Gabnet uniform. <laughs> I think you probably got yours the same place we got mine. 
I don't know why everyone makes you know this big. Chicago is the 25th per capita murder city in in the United States. Number one is East St. Louis, Illinois. Number two is Chester, Pennsylvania, and Camden, New Jersey, St. Louis, Missouri, Gary, Indiana. Wait a minute. You must be looking at a statistic that uh, has it compared to uh, the population. But yes. If, well, the he said he, he. But if you look at the number of shootings. Well, yes, but he's talking about per capita. Look at it compared to population. But per no, capita. No, per, no, no, per capita. Per, per capita is a very. It, wait a minute. Oh, Phil, no. Phil, per capita is a very interesting statistic to pay attention to because yeah. it's interesting that Chester, Pennsylvania has as much murder that it makes them the number two in the country yeah, per capita six people that live there and two of them got killed <laughs> well that's you know? then that if you're one of those two people uh, it's not good. Uh, 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 renee had her hand up yeah and then i think jeff wanted to say something yeah, yeah uh, i just it, it, it sorry <laughs> i i think we have to listen to what the kids are going to come out with and then back whatever that is so because I, kids know you know we no. used to say these kids don't know nothing. Now all of a sudden they're experts? No, no, but they're reaching out to people who are experts. And those people are and those people are adult people and they're coming through with statistics and information that they need in order to to get a game plan together and I want to see what they're coming up with. Well, I think that there's a lot of bullshit on both sides. I was listening to this thing louder with Crowder. And this guy uh, was sitting there talking to a person saying, you know, convince me why uh, there should be gun control. And uh, this guy Crowder says the CDC uh, uh, reported that uh, uh, P and I thought this was false because he said the CDC reported that there were so many people that stopped uh, armed people from uh, killing other people. And I was under the impression the CDC didn't release any of those statistics uh, and wasn't even gathering those statistics. Uh, I think it was even Tim that might have said that the CDC doesn't uh, uh, gather these uh, gun statistics. Now, uh, for, first of all, they're not statistics. They're not statistics. They're statistics. Okay, that's for starters. Don't stutter. <laughs> but, but just because, just because our stutter. government, just because our government doesn't doesn't uh, isn't allowed by a law from a stupid freaking Republican. But you don't to, get it. You don't to, get. It. I'm sir, saying. No. I'm saying that the guy's lying. I'm no, saying no, this no, guy's no, louder. No, there I'm is actually this guy, a rule. This guy, Crowder, who is a you know real conservative yeah. type guy, I'm mm -hmm. saying he came up with some bullshit thing in a conversation, didn't support it with a written document or anything, uh, and said something that I was, I believe, uh, is is not true. And no, uh, Terry, to, just, just to listen to thing, Terry Gross today. On both sides. Yeah, huh? listen. Yeah, actually, it is. But listen to Terry Gross today. Um, her show, Fresh Air, they had, Fresh Air. They, did, they did the interview with the guy and he regrets putting the bill forward and the bill became a law and because of this jackass, um, yeah, Fresh Air, and because of this jackass, the CDC isn't allowed to do research on gun violence in the United States. Right. Ha having said that, though, let, let's make sure, and Damien talked about it on his show today, too, but let's make sure you know that we're not the only country in the planet. So if we need statistics for stuff like that, we can go to like-minded places econ socioeconomically and find out like what Zealand? their information is. Yeah, they don't have any guns. Still. Yes, they do. In New Zealand, yeah, they do have some, but they have they have regulations that are really strong. But well, they do have guns. You can have guns in, in there. Ma Mario. Yes, Mario. Yeah. I just, has anybody in the, on the panel ever ever shot someone before? Uh, I, no, I've drawn down on people, but I've never shot them. My mom wouldn't let me shoot my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 uh, I haven't. Wait, wait. But Ray? I haven't shot anybody, but I had a friend who acts who was hunting with another friend and accidentally shot him and killed him. That's a different. Uh, it's an accident. Yeah, that's different. No, it okay. was horrible though. Yeah, I mean, it was, of course it yeah, is. Yeah. 
Yeah, Jeff, you know, you've been kind of so, cool. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, you've been quiet. Let's, let's let Jeff say something here. Well, I, I always want everybody to kind of think about that in New York City, they basically don't have those problems. That's not true. Amazing. It's so amazing. That's son. Now, yeah, I know we have a terrific police organization there. What, in New but, York City? Yeah, it, it, yeah. Act, actually, gun crime has been down incredibly in New York City. I know. Not everywhere, except Chicago. No, that is such so, bullshit. There's like more <laughs> gun crime in Orlando, Florida. Uh, um, uh, you're looking at uh, percentage. For instance, yeah. there's a cop in Richmond. Richmond had the 10th highest yeah. rate when I was there in the nation. But there's only 100,000 people. So what they did was they took the percentage of, of murders to the uh, number of people, and they came up with a thing. I'm talking about okay. actual crimes. Okay, wait a second. Are you telling me Cleveland, Ohio is a small town? It's number 16. Cleveland is small? Uh, no, it's Orlando, not. Orlando, Florida? It's not a small yeah. town at all. Well, it's not it's not Podunk, but it's not New York City. Cleveland's New Orleans, Cleveland's Louisiana. New Orleans is number ten. L.A. is big. Uh, Detroit, Oakland. Michigan is number nine. Yeah, well, Detroit is. Uh, Baltimore way, is number seven. By the way, everybody, excuse me if I keep brushing my eye and stuff, but it's itching like crazy. It's really terrible. Go ahead. Hey, why uh, are all the Republicans focusing on Chicago? It's because Obama uh, came from there. It's because Obama came from there, so maybe, that's why you're doing it. Uh, no, because it has onerous. Yes, it, it has very onerous uh, uh, gun laws. Like what? You can't buy them. Uh, as they get them from other states. Well, no, they get yeah. them illegally. Yeah, they go across the river and get, get them, them from, from Indiana other and every. You, you oh, think, come on. You think that the people that are shooting people up uh, in in Chicago uh, go buy go to a gun store and buy those? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now hold on a second. Hold on a second. Wait, 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 hold, on. Hold, hold on a second. Wow. Are you saying that it's hard to buy a gun in Chicago, right? Yeah. But it's not hard to have one because right. you can go. Get, you can go to the next state and buy one. No. What these people aren't going? To the next How state do you know? They're buying them out of a trunk of a car, which which you know? went to the state next to them. He, he, he saw it on a movie. They they steal them from people's houses, oh, and they and they and they buy yeah. them. Well, well, where do the people who have them in the houses get them from if they can't buy them? Well, nobody's getting any data because the CDC doesn't keep it. <laughs> See, I think uh, I think Frontline did a documentary on illegal gun sales. I know that. I, I, I forget now where I saw this show, but uh, they had, uh, you know, gangbangers interviewed, and they were quite honest about how they uh, got weapons, uh, under, uh, you know, illegally. Oh, oh they, they pass them around. They yeah. even have uh, descriptions for guns that have been used to kill people, you know, really hot guns that, that have, you know, got the serial numbers filed off and so forth. and. Yeah. Uh, I think it was on uh, Frontline, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, Ray, what website were you looking at for those statistics? Oh, okay. Uh, it's um, neighborhoodscout.com. Okay. <laughs> hey, you, you know something? No, yeah, it, uh, you know, I'd like to see a law enacted for all legislators and the president. They have to go to the fucking morgue and look at these bodies uh before they start shooting their mouths off or making any decision. I mean, the parents have to do that. You know, you have to ID your kid. You've got to go into the morgue and take a look at that. Right. Can you imagine that? You know, these dumb bastards like Trump, they should be forced to go to the morgue and take a look at all these shot up bodies before they start shooting their mouths off. And then maybe they'll have some yeah. uh, decent mm -hmm. gun re uh, reform legislation. Renee has her hand up. My, my yeah. point. Uh, wait, hold on a second, Mario. Renee had her hand up for a while there. Yes. Did you guys read what the ER nurse wrote about, or, or I don't remember if it was the nurse or the doctor. They, they wrote this, that they went into one of these children's bodies to work on a particular organ. They got to the the area where the organ was supposed to be and it was just obliterated there was literally no organ there so whether it was the kidney or the liver this bullet was so massive that it obliterated well, the organ hey phil were these hollow point bullets 
Uh, what what do you what do you mean? Uh, uh, in the in the shooting, were these hollow point bullets? Like, you know? No, yeah. pro- they're probably two twenty three, right? Yeah, Michelle? they're mm-hmm. not hollow points. They're okay, they're just high okay. velocity Ma- bullets that just yeah. shred yeah. stuff. Mario yeah. wanted to say something, so let me go to him because yeah. he doesn't have a camera. Yes, I, yeah. I was going to. My purpose of asking that anybody shot anyone is because since the answer is no, we got over five hundred years if you add everyone's age up of living and nobody ever needed one to survive. So the notion that you have to have one in order to live is just, is just Hollywood fantasy. Yep. Very good. <clears throat> Thank uh, you. As a matter of fact, I, I, I lived, I lived amongst, I lived amongst, you know, guns and, and people with, with, you know, basically, um, what you would consider, you know, um, uh, you know, needy people and, 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 a, and a gun culture and, I survive. Well, the reason that we uh, have guns in the Second Amendment uh, is so that we can protect ourselves from a tyrannical government, uh, just like the uh, English <laughs> tried to uh, uh, tried to do to the uh, to the settlers in the United yeah. States. Oh, or, Jesus. Uh, uh, again, well, again, Phil, 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 Phil. We can, we can, uh, you know, let's not go back to that old saw no, again. No, no. To begin with, <laughs> to begin <laughs> with, you're you're we're, you're referring to something that is in an ancient document that hasn't been updated in years. You know, That's the only way it gets updated is we add an amendment when we want to take somebody's rights away. Um, doesn't need updating. The, what it what it needs it, is enforcing. Oh, I, no, it's I the I'm most a, confusing statement in, in the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights. It is the Old worst Stanford written. It is the. Right. Uh, it, uh, wait, listen to me a second. It's yeah. the worst written amendment in the entire constitution precisely because it was written to the times and not written forever for posterity well think think about this at the time the military had muskets so you uh when you write this thing you want you know the uh i I, i'll defend your right to have a musket how's that well yes but now the military uh, has weapons like the AR-15, but in a even more lethal version, and therefore the citizens should be able to equal that uh, that threat. So if you don't, if you make the military use muskets, then no, I want I want to uh, Renee, and then I want to hear from Mario again. Yes, Renee. Okay, so I want so as I've been thinking about this. I only know one group that would be considered a well a well organized militia, okay? And they have membership, and they have members, they have dues. We get to see who they are. They're an organization that receives money. They're actually, and I'm talking about the Duck Hunters Unlimited. I thought you were talking about the NRA. No. So these people... (laughs) shoot ducks but they also are out there trying to preserve them as well and make a good habitat for them so this is the only group of people i know that would i would consider an organized militia does no, anybody so, else but, have but, any but, other ideas uh, of uh, renee renee, you, renee renee i'll have, have to stop you right film. i have to stop you right there because it's rabbit season Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, there was a great show a little while ago, uh, oh, wow. you know, D- Daniel Craig called Defiance, and it was about uh, Jews who uh, fled the ghetto and uh, formed an armed resistance, and they were able to survive in the woods in Belarus, I think, or something, but the Belsky brothers. Yeah. You know, uh, so in, in, in that frame of context, I would agree with Phil. That, yeah. By the, the way, the we, Second Amendment does have a valid place in our Constitution, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, use the example of uh, the Nazis in defiance and, and the Jews that fought back. Mario, in the ghetto. okay, uh, I mean, okay, Ma- Mario just wants to say something, but we've been joined by uh, by Mark Green. Let me mention that. Hello, Mario. Yes, Mario. No, no, I was just going to say. I mean, that sounds. You know, I, I'm a, I'm a big history buff myself, and you know. Um, I, I don't believe that the next time, I mean, I think the government has learned now that, that you can't take rights away from people. You just have to let them give them away. So most, for most of the part, for the most part, we all give up information every day that contributes to our, um, you know, basically giving them the ability to, to do what they want. They wouldn't even have to. Yeah, but my, qu- a, my, my question is the, the framers of the constitution, like uh, Thomas Jefferson or John Hancock, do you think if they were around today, 
they would approve of the way that particular amendment is being used. Absolutely. But because, I, uh, I, 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 I'm asking that as a question. Oh. I'm actually asking that as a statement. I don't think so. I don't think that's what the intent was. I don't think that's the reason they did it. And if they could see what that amendment had wrought, they would have at least worded it better. I think that that, uh, that amendment keeps a tyrannical government in check. Mm -hmm. And if you should get a tyrannical when government like When was the last time it kept... When the it, when, when, listen, all, in, in, the how world. old is the Constitution? 200 and something years. Yeah, okay. In those 200 years, when has a tyrannical government outside of our own tried to take over? They haven't because we're armed. Oh, oh really? Oh, oh really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. I, but you can see that all over the world there's been a number of tyrannical governments that have look, done look, that. Look how Russia, look how Russia's Syria. trying to... What, what about what's going wait, on wait, in wait, Syria wait, right wait, now? Mario's trying to say something, Phil. Let him say something here. I was saying Russia's strategy now has nothing to do with coming in with arms. They're, they're going. They're, they're just helping. You know, helping us uh, essentially destroy each other from within. Well, as Alex says, that's a what about? No, no it's, that, that's, it's not a what about. Exactly. It's not a yeah, what a, about. He's he's, he's, he's making a point that the Russians governments that are trying to take your rights and Russia. Do you think those people are allowed to own guns? Yes. I don't think so. Yes, how, yeah, they, how, how is the I gun, think they do, how is the gun? Uh, Phil, uh, they, yeah. I know they do in Ukraine. Maybe, yeah. uh, I, I was in Ukraine 2001, 2003, and you can, you can own, uh, well, at least hunting uh, right. rifles. Ukraine, Ukraine yeah. is fighting so, so, Russia right now, right? They've been taken over. By uh, Russia. Phil, what Russia, which, which Russian let's, do you Let's be shoot clear about one? this. The, the, the extreme right-wing Nazis in Russia... I mean, in Ukraine, are fighting Russia. Yeah. I just looked it Phil, up. Which in Russia, Russia, you can have guns, but you'd have to go through a, a, a class like a like we have to do for driving cars. You have to go through a gun safety yeah. class, and then you can own a, a firearm. Yeah. But yeah. Phil, no which one is talking you... about getting rid of the Second Amendment. All we're trying to do is get the war uh, being honest. You know, I'm si I'm sick and tired. Of, I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of all these people who are saying, "Well, you know, I I I I, I am for the Second Amendment, but no, I'm not for the Second Amendment because I think it, it it is a bad amendment, and I think it should be done away with. And I am one of those people that would fight for the repeal of the Second Alex Amendment." Alex is the only honest one on this panel because he said he wants guns taken away. Everybody else is saying, well, I'm for the Second Amendment. No. Like saying, I believe in God, but, you know. I'm not for the Second Amendment. <laughs> no, no I, but Alex is the one that said. Wait, I let's take a little poll here. Uh, by a raise of hands, and Mario, we can't mm -hmm. see you, so you can just say mm -hmm. Mario. Raise your hand if you would just like to get rid of the Second Amendment. Okay? That's uh, three out of the, uh, uh, well, four. <laughs> four out of us. How about you, Mario? <laughs> Actually, um, I'm undecided on getting away, doing away with the, the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. Any any of you other people undecided? The ones who didn't raise your hand? Uh, yes, Jeff. No, I, got, I had my hands twice. Oh, you had your because, hands twice. Is, right. Why is that? Because I think it needs to be at least edited and fixed. Uh, because it, it, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Jeff, this, how did Alex asked. Alex asked if he wanted it gone. If well, I, I know, gone, but, it definitely needs to yeah, be fixed. But you know, I, Jeff, yeah. how would it read? How would it read if you could write the Second Amendment? I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, okay. I don't know, but but I do know that the way it's written right now, you and I have tremendously different understandings about what it's about. Well, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. And I'm going to tell you, you, from my perspective, I don't know what the hell it's you know, it's hey, like. It's people, like, you know, if you, you start talking about repealing uh, a, a amendment, you know what you're talking about. You're talking yes, about I'm very a constitutional of, uh, convention. It is and a, I, a, we are run, this country's run by crackpot right-wingers and Republicans right now. Is that who you want to be, supervise a constitutional convention? You think they're going to give up 
you, you think there all the states have to ratify any change to the constitution? Way, no one forget about getting rid of the very, second very amendment. Very very in, very interesting <laughs> that we had an amendment that we made to the constitution which uh, about the one or two amendments later Apple. was repealed, but that amendment still exists. It isn't like yeah. they repealed it and then they said, okay, well, let's yank it out of the Constitution. It's still there, but the That's amendment repealing it is there. It, it's, it's too heavy of a lift. It, yeah, it's right. just too heavy right. of a lift to get rid of the Second Amendment. Exactly. And, and I'm not 100% sure that some of the shit coming out of Phil's milk isn't real. Having said that, I'm, I'm not willing to give the whole thing up. I don't want war type weapons on the streets and that's and not that right. needs to be fixed well the thing is I, that's the mario yes. if you yes. ask people they say it's there to keep tyrannical governments and you have to all right we heard that you. phil you already said that Two you're repeating yourself you old man years ago raymond mario wanted to say something and again you guys will have to excuse me but i i I, I like to bring a, just a different perspective, mm -hmm. you know, to the panel. Mm -hmm. And a, as a black American, right, mm -hmm. walking around on the streets with a bunch of, with, with a lot of, you know, hyped up white guys who are afraid of me because of the way I look, and, and I can get shot because it seems like a lot of, a lot of these guys who carry weapons, they, they just have an itch to, to use it, you know, like the Trayvon Martin situation, you know. Yeah. You know, this guy Zimmerman, he was just wanting to get a, you know, he, he, if it wasn't Trayvon, it would have been someone else. It wasn't because he was, Hey, Mario, uh, he just wasn't, a question, well, just, because we can't see you. He identified as white. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mario, where do you wear your pants? See what I mean? An idea of what, what, what kind what of stupid question is that, Phil? <laughs> what? It, let him. Let him. But oh, it's took us. Are they up? But to this is the mentality. This well, is the yeah. mentality that I deal with. You see, no, I, my hair is natural. No, wait, my hair is natural. Yeah. You know, I I had on a hoodie today. Oh. Okay. Because yeah. oh, it's cold, and I live in the north. Mm -hmm. Okay. I so so that. if I. If a guy's scared of me, I, you know, he may pull out his weapon and shoot me well, when I was Ray, asking Ray for Renati, directions. If Ray Renati, he's wearing a hoodie right now, and if his back was to me, I couldn't tell whether he was black or white. But uh, I'm asking you, do you wear Why, clothes in a certain is, way no, wait a minute, that make is, you is, appear uh, a threat? Like the guys who wear their. Wait, 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 I, I, didn't, I didn't know there was a such. Thing. Wait a minute. Let, yeah, let me ask. Know, wait a minute. Let me know. let me ask Mario a question. Chill. Mario. Sure. Do oh, you please. look at a guy, uh, say another black guy, and judge him yes. by the way he wears his pants? Never. Never. If he wears okay. Pants, so Never. That, Phil, that, that, that is maybe the wrong. most white racist it's thing I've heard tough. come out of your mouth in this entire show. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I'm like a prisoner from 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 a from a prison, and uh, that that, oh that me is trying to dress like a thug. And when somebody advertises that they're a thug, you know what? I believe they're a thug. Oh boy! Hey, Phil. Wait, 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 Jeff. This is what's wrong with the Second Amendment, right here. You got Yahoo's like that mentality walking yeah, around, yeah. but guys like me, you know, who who are just trying to get home to to kids. And then he he thinks I'm a thug because my pants well, are high enough. Yeah, I, 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 okay, I okay. Now wait a minute, Jeff. 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 Jeff, ha right. Jeff has his hand up. Jeff. I, I know that Phil is about ready to have a, a prostate uh, surgery, and, right. and maybe when you're in the hospital, they could do a little ne a neurosurgery <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Maybe just a little. I'm beginning. I'm just. I'm thinking the I best way to. Say I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking the best way to take care of that prostate problem is to stick a gun up his ass. Well, hey. <laughs> I want to say something in defense of Phil, for the okay? Hey, Phil, yeah. why don't you let me say something in defense of you, uh, the Second Amendment? Sure. Okay. We, we can't simplify this thing. There was an incident uh, a year ago here, right in Marin, right in my town, San Rafael. Uh, some and between two white guys, uh, a, an older guy who was 90 years road old, rage. road rage, 90 years old. He was uh, his home was broken into by a deranged drug addict, another white guy who pulled a gun on him. And 
the 90 year old said, hey, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm so scared. So the guy said, OK, hurry up. So he goes into the bathroom. He pulls out a gun and he starts shooting at the uh, kid, the, the assailant. And he, he plugged him twice in the stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, the assailant got a shot off at the 90 year old. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he turned the 90 year old turned out to be an ex sheriff. So he had experience with a gun. But he saved his life by plugging this guy twice in the stomach. The guy goes to the hospital, the perpetrator, and says, oh, I misfired my weapon. You know, so the, the doctors didn't believe him. Right. You know, two shots in the stomach, he misfired. So there, there's a lot of situations like that where so, we so, weapons are totally Mario. valid for home defense. Mario. Mario. Mm. Mario. So, see, Phil, Phil is an ex-cop uh, or... or yeah, yeah. Or uh, former reserve officer. Really call it reserve former reserve officer. officer. Yeah, but or as we so call him, rent the cop. So, this, so, so he, he. This is the mentality that even the officers are carrying around. Oh yeah. That's hey, scary. look! If somebody advertises, because he represents, he, you represent. I believe him. Yeah. That, well, how does that doesn't mean this, you're a thug, I, I'm, Phil, because I'm struggling thugs. with the correlation. Thugs. If you look in prison, or you look at this gang stuff. MS-13, all of these gangs, they wear their pants down around their okay. uh, tuchus. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can, no, can I no. answer to that? Uh, yes, oh, please yeah. answer that, Mario. The, the stupidity here now, is now, really now, astounding. In the, in the, the mid-1980s, just real quick, the mid-1980s, uh, you know, a bunch of Jewish guys uh, backed, uh, you know, Russell Simmons and, a, and some different guys in, in New York, and they noticed that, hey, you know, these, these young teenagers are wearing their, their clothes bigger. They want them bigger. So they started companies like Fat Farm and the others, just no different than the white kids who are misfits, wanted the bigger bigger clothes. So companies made them. You know, I was good. It's funny. It's so, funny. Wait, hold wait on a second. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. I'm going to educate Phil. you. I'm going to educate Phil. you. I'll educate you so, back. So, so that's oh. where that style of clothing came from was, was that they were, um, you know, it was a demand, so they were supplied. Now, if you haven't noticed, they've gone gone to the skinny jeans like the rockers wore, and so lately everybody's been wearing skinny let jeans. Now that fad is. Well, let me let me let me just say just one thing before you do, Phil, second, Phil, yeah. Phil. Well, before Alex, you do, wait a, wait a minute, hold on a second, wait a minute. I'll, I'll get to you. You're, you're next, okay? But what I was going to say, I was it was the very question I was going to ask Mario about those low riding pants that they're actually made to be worn that way. Uh, mm -hmm. th that's the way they are styled. <laughs> Uh, uh, and uh, look, because Mario, I, Alex, wait a second before I lose my train of thought. Mario, if you're walking down the street and you see a bunch of white guys with SWAT stickers on their on their forehead it's different. and, and swastika, you see a bunch of white supremacists. Swastikers. Does that give, does that give you an indication that maybe they're up to no good or they are no good? Because they were there advertising Habit. the fact that they don't like you. Okay, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I, I drive a truck for a living, as we know. Yeah. I was I was down. I was I was in Springfield, Missouri. I got turned around on the road, and I couldn't get off of that road with with my semi. So mm -hmm. a guy comes over to help me. He he said, "Well, you know, he got into it with a neighbor because she was mad because I was parked in front of him." So he says, "Well, you know what? Come on over here." No, no, he walked back to his house. He told me when the tow truck gets there, he would assist me. Yeah. So I went to run over to tell him because I thought of a new way to get out. When I go over to his house, which was like four houses from mm -hmm. where I was struck, he stuck. He had a sign on the garage that said, Coon Hunter. Oh, <laughs> right? Jesus God. Well, I Coon Hunter. Give you an indication. Wait, no, 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 no. You wait. You wait. You wait. Mm -hmm. So I, when I knocked on his door, he said, I said, you know, because he, he had come to me and he was polite at first. So I said, hey, you know, when they come, I was like, actually, could you help me? He said, yeah, sure. Here's my point. He was the next truck driver, okay? And yeah. that superseded. So so when I saw that Coon Hunter sign, I didn't run. Yeah, I went and knocked you, on his I, door. I, so okay. to answer your question, what's the difference? For instance, if you were walking down the street and you saw okay. half a dozen yeah. white supremacists, and oh, uh, geez, that would Phil. give you Give it calls. up, Phil. Give it now, up. You wouldn't think that these guys are bad guys. But, you know, but they are advertising. They're advertising as white supremacists, where the other guy just had his pants low. I don't see how you equate the two. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Wait, hey, let me jump in here, okay? 
Mark hasn't said a word. I'd like to hear what Mark's got to say about all of this. Well, I heard I heard Donald Trump yesterday say that um, guns should be taken away from people, and due yep. process should should come afterwards. Well, uh, nobody was really happy about that. But you know something? I I even think that guys who came back from the military with PTSD should not be allowed to own a gun. Uh, until until they get help and their issues are under control, yeah. they shouldn't have By a By the gun. way, one of the people on the chat line wrote this with a question mark. SWAT stickers? <laughs> are you from Boston, Phil? No. How do you know somebody has PTSD? Uh, they 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 say they have PTSD and they get benefits from the military, uh, to, because they say they have it. They get these benefits, and then uh, when a guy goes uh, has PTSD or says he does or whatever, and they go off the off the deep end, uh, you know they say you know oh well you know he was such a nice guy. Well, if you say you have PTSD, then you shouldn't have a gun. And if you're and if you're going in for some if you. Oh. Uh, if you got a restraining order against you, you shouldn't have a gun. And if you've uh, been uh, 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 given a 5150 uh, where you're uh, a danger to yourself and others, you shouldn't have a gun. And if this you're a right. former uh, exactly policeman, you should have to you give your gun sure up. That yes. happens when it's got to be reported. And if, 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 they, if they don't... How, how, do you, how do you know, Phil, whether somebody has PTSD? Let's say he apply that person he or she applies for. Well, suppose he uh, does. Suppose they don't. Moron. Suppose you they are don't. A fucking moron. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why? You have PTSD. Hey Phil, I have PTSD. I've never been in the military. Should well, I not be able to own a gun? Military. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't have a gun either. Why? You know, because I'm a, har a dangerous person. No, because you said to you, you said earlier that uh, you you don't like guns. You you've been right. on some sort of drug for 35 years to That's keep right. you in in check. And uh, <laughs> you know what? No, not in check. Well, in no. in, in you know uh, even keeled. So I should never have told you that. I know. Well, no, I'm not going to use it against you, but. You know, I sag though. I do sag. I wear saggy pants too, no, and, no, and a hoodie. No, I do. I do, but that's only because sometimes I'm wearing one of the large an pair without. Aircraft attacks your house with your gun. But, but, and let me, you know, <laughs> Sir Adam. Good question. The reason this is ridiculous, with your statement, other than it being racist as shit, the reason it's ridiculous is because you people who don't know fashion should really stop acting that's like fashion? you do. That's fashion. Thank you, Renee. It is fashion. Phil, it Phil, a, and let it me was say a something. Trend. Yeah, and that's like the pajamas you and I are wearing is fashion. Hey, yeah, that's that fashion. Is a, Phil, uh, Phil, Renee is, Renee is absolutely when I pull it right. Up here. Mario. <laughs> yeah, Renee Mario. Okay, Mario wants to say something. All right. I, I was gonna say to Phil back when they did the uh, the shootings in Colorado, the trench coat mafia kids. Yeah. Uh, Trench coat yeah. doesn't mean automatically that you were going to shoot up a movie theater or a school. It, yeah. it, it, you, when when you've got a guy with a trench coat, he's either going to shoot up a school or a theater, or he's a flasher. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Or he's cold. Okay, you go to the cool. jokes when you can't answer. No, and you know yeah, what? He does, Mario. What, what was yeah, the temperature? Hey, Mario, what was the temperature in Colorado when these guys came in with the trench coats? Was it summertime? That, that's not the point. The well, the point coat, is exactly you're, you're, you're oh, out. I, I don't know. I just okay. If well, it was something, let, what let's was the say it's hot, and it would give me pause. no. No, what was if it? I saw a no, kid don't. in a trench coat. Wait a minute, Mario. If I saw a kid in a trench coat and it was eighty-five degrees, ninety degrees out, I would say to myself, "What the? Phil, sh what is Phil, this guy doing? Calm down. You know, Phil. what's the? Phil, other so how have you not? How have you not already shot somebody? <laughs> you are terrible. The guy put his hands up. I tell you, Mario, the guy who reached down below his seat put his hands up before I pulled the trigger. When I when I told him, "Let me see your hands," he said, "No, no, no, don't shoot me." And he put his hands Phil, up. Otherwise, Phil, when that guy was do, going do, under do, the seat, do, he was going to die. Do you realize the racism you were engendering tonight? How do you know if the guy I, I was almost shot? No, was I'm not right talking about that. I'm talking about just your whole demeanor about that you're going to judge somebody about how low he wears his pants. Listen, I live in Harlem. Yeah. I see them all the time. And the only thing I ever wonder about, and I'm sure Mario will probably agree with me, is the 
way in which they are able to wear the pants that way, and they don't fall they off. They keep you holding know. them up with one hand. No, they don't. They walk with them like that. Am I right, Mario? And they, it's a, it's a re, there's a real trick yeah. to it. I, I have watched this, and I've had this hidden desire to go up to somebody and pull those pants down to their knees. Well, that's only because you want to give them a blowjob, but that's no, another no, no, story no, I've altogether. Had that fantasy. I've had that fantasy about walking up to you know one of these kids with the pants on, whether white or black, it doesn't matter, and just going boom down to well, the knees. But joke's on you, Phil, because I was in Oakland two weeks ago, yeah. and there was a kid walking on the street, black kid, and he had a real saggy pants they were coming down yeah. and they they slipped down you really? know for the first time in my life i saw this and he had a second pair of pants on well he okay, wasn't so that yeah. ends the yeah. horse. he yeah. wasn't wearing the official ones that yeah, yeah. are oh, made wait a minute. no but it, phil hold phil, on a second it's a fashion there, yeah. There, yeah. there's yeah. uh there's renee has and, uh, spoken word renee has her hand up renee has her hand up and then ray has renee hand was 100 percent right you know it, this is it, a fashion you can't judge people by uh, right. fashion. And, 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 yeah. it's coming, and, and it's coming out of fashion too and, it, yeah. and it's bad for the men just to let you know it's really bad for the guys mm -hmm. because it's going into it's into the skinny pants now and the problem with that is it, it keeps you guys puppies too warm and so these Renee, skinny jeans are Renee, not good fit. Oh, oh, hey, renee can you imagine me in skinny pants oh god no <laughs> no uh, because but that'd be a good way of taking care of the prostate problem i just also want to say i also want to say Ray? you know it, the racism is disgusting and also this whole mental health card as you call it yep. all right I, you know i have ptsd from child abuse i have never been a danger to anyone or another person in my life. Yeah. So to say to say that because I have PTSD that I am a da automatically dangerous. This is just bullshit, Phil. No, and I'm I'm sick of your you like you just no. categorize people into all these fucking boxes. And I swear to God, it's just mm. pissing me off. And the racist <laughs> thing is disgusting. I mean, no, it's disgusting. Thank you, Ray. It's a thank you, is, thank you Renee. Wearing, thank you, Alex. If if you have an, an issue. That you could go off the deep end, and your psychiatrist, your psychiatrist, no matter how unfortunately you got it, our military men uh, didn't deserve the PS uh, PTSD that they got. Maybe some of them have it, and really, and neither, have it, and and neither did, and neither did Ray. Right. Well, no, and neither did Ray. But unfortunately, it happened to you. And and should you, uh, uh, you know, should you be in possession of something that could hurt people if uh, you didn't have your meds? Well, I, I, no. I, you, you know, right. here uh, I go back to the old uh, saw of mine. You know, some a, a good guy with a gun is one brain tumor away from being a bad guy with a gun. And if the guy had a brain tumor, he shouldn't have so the gun. So why put the gun in wow. his hands in the first place? Yes, Renee. Look, my, Renee. Mario, okay. Renee. Mario, oh, Mario can I ask you a question? How, how, sure, Renee. Uh, not that you're all of the black people in America, but how is, no, the black, how is the black community taking the fact that we're going unhinged over something that unfortunately most black or a lot of black communities, not all, but most black, some black communities have been living with this gun horror for yes. for decades. Just one, um, a lot of people that I know are just wondering why, why are we just now talking about it? Like this is what we've been saying for years. We're the canary in the coal mine. A lot of times, you know, um, uh, with situations like this in particular, uh, you know, we've been dealing with gun violence in our communities for years, you know, and, and like I say, no one has ever come in to deal with the, uh, uh, you know, childhood problems of the uh, single family homes and, and just the mental anguish that some of the people are going through. I, I grew up with guys, you can't tell me they're not nuts, you know, but no one talked about uh, mental health. And, well, and, you have and, a valid point, Mario. Uh, you know, the, what they were saying is that on, on these school shooters, there was another thing besides the gun that was consistent. And the other thing that was consistent was no father in household. And, oh, and oh, uh, come on. Phil, please. Admit that Phil. the number of fathers Phil. that are not Phil. in the household Phil. is much greater All right, than Phil. Phil. Right, Phil. Hold Phil. on a second. And, and you know what? Wait, 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 wait. Wait. If you don't like a statement, you just call it racist. No, let, let's do this. Because it, it is. 
is. Because it yeah. is, it's Phil. It's true. It's Phil, true. I'm, I'm a father. I'm in a home. That's you. That's that's you. But if you look at the statistics hey, that, in a black communities, how many you know, we'll, women? We'll talk about that say, another day. It, it, Go it, ahead. Time out. We'll talk so, about that another day. Let me, let's, let's say this. It isn't that it's a male and a female in the household. It's that it's two parents in the household. And, Phil, if you're going to do shit like that, you need to look at the state of Texas. They have a horrific thing where if... Oh, God, I'm not going to say that. I'll puke a little bit. If a man and a woman had sex and she gets pregnant, the guy never has to pay child support. Well, that that has nothing to do with the fact that in these these, uh, communities that are uh, lower, uh, lower. No, no, Phil. uh, What's your uh, Wait a minute. Hold on on a second. Both both of you, Mario and, and Phil. I think the thing that we haven't addressed here is just people living bef- below a certain wage yeah, it's poverty and, 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 and poverty, and it has nothing to do with race. It is just that blacks but, are, are, are subject to poverty more often because of the way the society is structured. I agree with okay. that. Okay, would you agree with that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. hold on a second. To be oh, true. Oh, oh, no, no, it isn't true. But, but Mario, do you agree with me? I would agree with you, and I'd also like to thank you, Ray and Renee, for for being open minded and recognizing, you know, just uh, the racism uh, with some of the statements. Hey, and I, I, su- I know. Yeah, uh, I support Colin Kaepernick. I mean, we have institutional racism. Look, he's better than uh, maybe a third of the quarterbacks in the league, and he hasn't been able to get hired because he kneeled down. He, yeah, he, he took the him, knee. Definitely. Yeah, good for him. I support. By the, the guy way, when 100%. you're when you're knighted by the queen, don't you take the knee? I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, why is taking the knee necessarily disrespect? Um, All but but you, you, know, rep- you know, I mean, if I were Kaepernick and I really wanted to make a statement, I would have pulled my pants down and mooned the flag. <laughs> he was taking the knee because of uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, and the, he felt that the cops were uh, being uh, were wronging uh, the black community. And, yeah. then, and then he wore a set of socks <laughs> with pigs on it. What, what have you done so, to prove him wrong, Phil? Just listen to your. If you listen back to this and listen to yourself. <laughs> You know, and listen and to, I'm listen to yourself it, tomorrow. It like it is, and you know what? You know what, Mario? It, it's oh once in a wow. while you need somebody to take the other side of the card so you can have a, a reasonable discussion. You know, if if everybody sat there and agreed all day, and you had no one that uh, took the other uh, position, you know, uh, you would just be looking at the mirror. You know, tonight uh, Ray Ray has been wearing a, at times the hoodie, and tonight you've been at times wearing the hood. Oh, who, who, the hood? But, yeah. <laughs> but Phil, t- taking the position, taking the opposite position, which is something I like to do because I like to poke at people, um, is different from being a racist. It's Those not are two different you, there are a lot of people that have the same view as me. And they're they're not, and you can use the race card if you want. But the bottom line is, yeah. you're getting an honest discussion. You're getting it, it, an honest discussion from somebody that feels differently uh, about uh, the, this situation. And uh, the race card and racism are not the same thing. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> join the channel. Is yeah. that Roy Orbison? Yeah. yeah. The guy's got his shades on. Yeah, uh, uh, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John, Johnny rules yeah, right now. I'm just wearing my gangster. Clothes, yeah, well, you, you look know? like Roy Orbison. I'm sorry, you can't look like a gangster. <laughs> hey, Phil, if you saw a group of uh, white guys walking down the street with their pants sagging, would you feel the same way? Oh, yes. Wait. Absolutely. If I saw, wait, if okay. I saw I a, group a bunch of thugs, has was, nothing to do with color. Has so, nothing to do with color. I even mentioned MS13, which I think is a Latin. Uh, that, that, oh, please, that, that, if, that's the. Yeah, that's Trump's We version. gotta go. Hey. Yeah. Two uh, seconds. If I saw a bunch of white men walking down the street that had New Balance on, New Balance shoes on, they got I would know they were racist motherfuckers. <laughs> anyway, I think I think with that, <laughs> like, they can resole those shoes. Yeah. Let, let let's this let this then be the first step towards international brotherhood. Um, <laughs> hey, brother, wow. you got a dime? Wow. I gotta go buy a gun. 
<laughs> yeah. Before they take them away, Ray. I know because I had PTSD. I got to get it before you know they outlaw me. Yeah. <laughs> you just put it up on the web. All they right, we got to call it to a close. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, you haven't been able to get a word in edgewise tonight. Neither has Mark. Uh, uh, Sorry about that. Mark Green, but we he appreciate got, he's him got calling. One more on out, hey Mario, you, know? you got to call more <laughs> often. You're 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 good conscience to have around here. You're really important. Thank you, thank you. And John Perula, Ray Renati, uh, Ray you Renee Collins, all of you. Thank you for being with us. Why don't you give them a big uh, like a big wave goodbye so they can see? Okay, goodbye to the citizens panel. And uh, hopefully we'll be back with them again tomorrow night. And maybe you as well, if you decide to give us a call. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a free thing for everybody to do. It's free to use Skype. It's free to call the citizens panel. And uh, uh, it, it, I think you're, uh, you know, it's uh, a, a well worth it thing to do. I can't even speak English this time of night. Sorry about my eye tonight, folks, but it has been itching and tearing like crazy, which means there's some allergy acting up here. In the meantime, we'll be back again tomorrow night, uh, right after Damian Chaplin does the exchange at 10 o'clock. Next is Jack and Amy with the intersection at midnight. It is the one at one o'clock. It is the wonderful sounds of connections. It goes on for about an hour and a half into the morning. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow, as I said, at 930 Eastern time, it's Damian Chaplin. And then I'll see you tomorrow at 10. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.